Rolling in three, two. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those of you who don't know what the hell you are yet, hop along PR here, and today, since I don't know what the word shame means, I'm doing a very late Valentine special. So I'm going to be talking about my top fictional character crushes. Now before I go any further, I'm going to lay a few ground rules for the list. First of all, these are my crushes. Not yours, so let me be me, and I'll let you do you. We cool? We cool. Also, this is not on the list of the sexiest characters. Nope. That's a battle I'll have nothing to do with. Most of these entries have nothing to do with their appearances. Are they attractive? Hell fucking yes. But I won't let their looks dictate where they fall on the list. Mostly. Also, some of these are more recent, whereas others are old as dirt. But again, this list is mine. So if, by all means, if you don't like my list, you can make your own. Also, one entry per franchise. Otherwise, the Persona franchise would have this list dominated. Now, let's begin this list by introducing you all to a master. Well, rather mistress, but master sounded better. Number 10. Aqua is a badass chick, an extremely caring heart, and is one of the two Keyblade Masters currently in the Kingdom Hearts series. Now, Kingdom Hearts is a favorite of mine, and the character writing of Aqua is a powerful inclusion to such a feeling and emotion-driven series. She cares about all of her friends, and probable crushed Kara, so much that she sacrificed herself and is marooned in the land of darkness. Now, I need to state something. I love strong women. Not necessarily physically strong, but strong, fuck you, I'm gonna do things my way. Women. Aqua definitely falls into that category. Now she's at the bottom of the list, well, her character is nowhere nearly refined, and it took her a long point to get to the fuck you point of strength. Cause she was kinda a little peon. But, I love strong women, and swords, and you will all do well to remember that fact. Alright, let's move on to a character from her original debut. Number 9. Raven from the original Teen Titans was snarky, antisocial, and magical. And as an antisocial kid, I really resonated with Raven. She did things her way, and was often treated like a little weird kid. But as a weird kid, I was an easy target. Speaking of easy targets, let's take a look at one of the two entries where their looks got them higher on the list than they probably should have. Number 8. Alright, we have a sexy ninja here. And while Sheena is a kind character and her aspect of finding her determination is incredibly powerful, Let's take in consideration one simple thing. I was a teenager in puberty when I got around playing this game. Of course she's on the list for other reasons and looks, but I'll level with you all. She's a character archetype, much like... Number 7. Alright, Princess Garnet belongs squarely on this list because... Well, she was the first princess I ever rescued. Hell, looking at something... I think that my interest in women kind of got based on Princess Garnet. I played this game in 2000, so I was 8. I remember seeing this timid girl grow into a strong, confident woman, and it kind of enticed me. Looking at the game now, her character is strong, but it isn't that outstanding. She's a very dynamic character, and somewhere along the lines, I fell for the princess. Now comes a different type of princess. Princess Tsundere. Number 6. Tsundere. Am I saying that word right? Doesn't matter. Noir is a character who is given the nickname to Sundere Heart, and she's the most appealing character that isn't the main character out of the Neptunia games because of that adorable trait. And I'm not alone for liking Noir for that trait. Do you know why? She got a spin-off game. And we're just going to whore out a CPU spin-off by looks alone, Vert would have won for two obvious reasons. But no, we have a Noir game based on the fact that she's a massive to Sundere and that's adorable. Try to convince me otherwise, internet. Try it. Now. Let's get to an entry that steals hearts. And other things. Number 5. What's that? Why, why is Navi on the list but is it based on looks only? Well, for one, she's smart. A very attractive quality. And I feel like a lot of people forget that Nami is probably one of the smartest straw hats. Navigation is her calling and what she excels at. Let's look at her weaponry. She manipulates the weather from her weapon. Not something a Dundum could do. Also, she is more often than not the voice of reason for characters. She's also a very fortified character. From a young age, she set out onto her ways, all to help the people she cared about. A very loving and caring act. She's also a very savvy and sassy character, and she's even used to beating the shit out of the guys, like Luffy. Hey, speaking of beating the shit out of people... Number 4? She's sassy, sarcastic, brazen, caring, and overall strong. Yang's character is so well-defined and written that she could look like anything, and she'd probably still earn her spot on this list. I love Yang's character, because she does shit like this. 
and this. And she even goes Super Saiyan. Now, I don't have a perfect girl, but if I did, she'd be very akin to Yen. So why is she number four on the list? Well, writing mostly, and the next entry hits me with a weakness of mine. Number three. I love redheads. The original list for this video that I made last year had six redheads on it. Now this is an entry where she originally worked her way into my heart because, much like Sheena, when I got around to playing Dragon Quest VIII, I was a teenager in puberty. However, I loved the game so much so I wanted to replay it a few years back. I really appreciated Jessica and her role in this game. First of all, highly intelligent. And she starts the journey with practically telling her mother to fuck off with traditions. Seeing that I hate traditions that dictate people's life, that was pretty endearing. Also, she was written very well to be the fan service character. Because of, um... What's this game's rating? T? You sure about that? But her part is hilarious and written to be a goofy role. So, overall, just take it with a grain of salt. She knows that she's ridiculous. You know that it's ridiculous. Just sit back and enjoy it. Alright, now, let's change gears for a second. All these characters have earned their place in the rating because of their personality, timing in my life. The top two entries, as pretty as they are, earn their spots because of how they're written in regards to the story and their character. Number two spot goes to... Number two... Nato's character is intelligent, determined, strong, and many more things. But she shows her soft side as well. She's a complex character for sure, but she's one on the list and at number two because of the Christmas scene. She bears it all to the main character and leaves herself open because she accepts herself and wants to show herself or who she is to the person that she loves. Accepting herself was a conflict that she had a major struggle with. With the moment of vulnerability, it just melted my heart and lodged its way to be there forever. Now you might make the case that number two and number one are kind of mirrored and the writing is a little more personal in this case because the attention to character writing detail that the Persona series had. But number one is slightly weaker in that aspect, but it's number one for a reason. Number one. All right, now Laura is number one on the list for a reason. Her chosen partner event had a significant impact on my life. At that point, I was chasing women left and right for no particular reason. But when I watched the chosen partner scene, I decided to just let things come naturally and let my interests lead me to the right people. Well, it's paid off by Hopalong Hooligans. Valentine's Day was recent, and it was a nice reminder of what happens when you let your passions lead your way to others. Back to Laura. While her scene may not have been nearly as detailed as Nato's, it's still a powerful scene nonetheless, because we have someone who's opening up herself to the person that she loves, leaving herself vulnerable. Laura and Reen is my number two ship. It's only second to Joshua and Estelle. Not to mention, she's a badass, wields a huge fucking sword, and as deadly as she is beautiful. <sighs> Alright, with the list now completed, I'm going to end this video with an announcement. Since I'm a fan of Legend of Hero games, and Laura is number one on the list, I am announcing that March is going to be Legend of Heroes month. What does that mean? Well, all my production videos are going to relate to the Legend of Heroes. On point, character alignment, reviews, and possibly more, will be for Legend of Heroes. So thank you everybody for watching. If you have anything you want to say, make sure to like in the comments below. And thank you for staying weird.